this is Outdated, and welcome back to Outdated Reviews. Today, we're going to look at the Call of Cthulhu Keeper Rulebook and by Chaosium. Um, this is the seventh edition of the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game, which has been around quite a while. I want to say early 80s. It was um, one of the, like, it, it would be probably lumped in with the rash that came out after D&D kind of got big there for a while. It wasn't big yet. Call of Cthulhu came out. A few other things came out. Um, it's been around for a long time. It's a venerable franchise and a venerable company. And we're going to take a look at what this book has to offer. But before that, we're going to have a word from our sponsors. Uh, what? Well, what do you mean we don't have sponsors? Haven't we talked about this? I mean, like, Every other YouTuber has a sponsor. Why can't I have a sponsor? But because I'm not a corporate shill? I don't think that's how sponsorship works, dude. I mean, we gotta keep the lights on, you know what I mean? How, do you know how much of the electric bill is increased by this light in this camera here? Do you have any idea? Okay, uh, so we don't have a sponsor in the traditional sense, right? No spot, none, none. Okay, fine. This video is sponsored by your parents. Because without them, you wouldn't be here to like and subscribe. There we go. Ah, let's do this thing. Okay, so Call of Cthulhu, Keeper Rulebook. First off, as you can tell, it's hardback, right? It is a standard size hardback. Nice thick spine here. The yellow on blue looks nice. Let's take a look at what it says back here in the back. The old ones ruled the earth eons before the rise of man. Traces of their cyclopean cities can still be found on remote islands, buried amid shifting sands and in the frozen wastes of the polar extremes. Originally, they came to this world from the stars. They sleep now, some deep within the earth or beneath the sea. When the stars are right, they shall again walk the earth. Call of Cthulhu is a tabletop role-playing game based upon the world, worlds of H.P. Lovecraft. It is a game of secrets, mysteries, and horror. Playing the game of steadfast... I'm sorry. Playing the role <laughs> of steadfast investigators, you travel to strange and dangerous places, uncover foul plots, and stand against the terrors of the mythos. This book, the Keeper Rulebook, contains core rules, background, guidance, spells, and monsters of the game. It is intended for use by the Keeper of Arcane Lore, or the Keeper. Think Dungeon Master. That player will present the adventure to the other players. You must have at least one copy of this book to play Call of Cthulhu. The other players, the investigators, should have one or more copies of the Investigator Handbook containing expanded rules for character creation, skills, occupations, equipment, and more. Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition is backwards compatible with all other available Chaosium titles. Yeah, they're backwards compatible all the way back to the first one. It's a, actually an incredibly simple conversion process. It basically requires you to know how to type times 5 into a calculator. Okay, so first off, this is my copy. It is not a review copy. So, because, uh, you know, I don't have that kind of relationship with anybody. Um... But one thing I noticed is we've got this flat spine that, for some reason, wiggles just a little bit. I am not sure why that is, but because some of them do it, but most of them don't. And so I thought I would point that out. Um, really solid construction. Quick look here. Okay, now this is kind of wasted space. I do like the coloration here, though. Call of Cthulhu. Interesting art there. We got a forward. Um, now there's some art right there. That's that's awesome. Um, so the thing that is interesting about Call of Cthulhu, when you think of other role-playing games, you think like say Cyberpunk, which I reviewed previously, that takes place in a um, dystopian future, right? And you know kind of where you are. The setting is already defined. Um, you play say Dungeons and Dragons. It doesn't matter which edition it is. Um, the setting is generally defined. It's a fantasy world. Now, there could be odd little things added to that fantasy, like a little bit of steampunk here or there, or just a straight-up traditional fantasy like the old Greyhawk or 
Forgotten Realms, you know, but it's always a fantasy world, right? Call of Cthulhu isn't like that. Call of Cthulhu does have a standard setting. Actually, I guess you could say two, but it has a ton of other settings. You can set it at any time, anywhere, and it's Call of Cthulhu. As long as you use the rules, and it's about fighting against the mythos. Um, I did a review of uh, Delta Green. That used to be a modern Call of Cthulhu setting. Now it's its own game with a different company, but it's still the same concept, right? So that's one of the things that makes it interesting. This is my copy, and the paper quality, it's semi-glossy, looks like. Makes images like this just look really amazing. Also, really grotesque, but that's kind of its point, right? Um, in Call of Cthulhu, you use your standard polyhedral dice, except you don't use... Let me go back. There's no 12-sided. I have ne I've never seen anything reference a 12-sided. And the starter set doesn't even come with a 12-sided. Why? You don't use one. Okay. HP Lovecraft. Now, here's where you have to, um, and love, I believe, um, there's a section here that deals with Lovecraft's racism. It's the whole idea, and as a literature teacher, uh, and, you know, I have a couple of degrees in this thing, we have this concept where, um, Art exists outside the artist, that we cannot judge a work of art by the person who created that work of art. Um, we can judge that person by what that person does, but we have to judge the work of art by how well it works within the confines of that artistic genre, right? So using Lovecraft as an example, in college and in high school, but especially college, I read a lot of H.P. Lovecraft. And um, at the time, he was not considered literary canon, meaning, you know, officially part of the American literature lexicon or whatever. Um, my capstone presentation senior year was to say he should be in the canon. So I did a bunch of research, um, and I worked on it for almost a year. I did the presentation, but the funny thing is, while I did that research, I actually changed my mind. I felt like, never mind, he should not be part of the canon, because he was a racist piece of crap in a time when everybody was a racist piece of crap. Like, even among other racist piece of craps, he was a racist piece of crap. Like, th that's how severe he was. He made the bad look good, right? And whenever I mentioned that in my presentation, because I still presented that he should be included, but at the end, I put it as a caveat that, you know, doing this research made me recognize things I did not recognize before. How one of the central themes of his pieces was a fear of like interracial coupling and he made that a central theme and I felt like that kind of crossed the line um, that I was told that's when I was like really in, enlightened on the idea of no the literature exists outside the author if he does a good job of getting across the theme even if you find the theme abhorrent he, he, he or she still did a good job at the end right now we can again judge them bear in mind he's very dead like he's exceptionally dead but I do appreciate the fact that it goes into what his life was like, you know, who he was and how, well, honestly, terrible he was as a person, but how his creation lives on. And so that is interesting because he did create this universe of the great old ones and these alien powers and how they, these horrific things that are out there, always waiting, most of which barely acknowledged we existed, but whenever our paths crossed, it went bad, very, very badly. So, for a core rule book, what I want is, I want the rules. This definitely has the rules. It has the rules quite well, quite thoroughly. It mentioned on the back here that you could get the uh, Investigator's Handbook for, like, more character creation options. There's a ton of character creation options here. I don't feel like that's even needed. Uh, I do have the book, but I, I've i played campaigns and adventures just out of here. And heck, I've done it just out of the starter set. I could go with just the starter set for a long time because Chaosium puts together really well thought out products nowadays. And this is a great example. Um, but yeah, I want the rules, right? I generally would like an adventure um, I don't need a need dice or anything with a course thing. 
here. But I do, um, let's see, rules, adventure. Those, I think, are the core things I'm looking for, right? And, and it, in a set, and there's the combat stuff. The rules have to be expressed so that I can understand them. This is the basic roleplay system. Whatever your skill is, say it's like 65. If you want to accomplish something, you roll percentage dice. If it's a 65 or below, you succeed. If it's particularly difficult, you have to just roll half of your stats. So instead of say 65, if it's hard, I'd have to roll 32 because you have to round down. Then again, extremely hard would be one fifth of the value. So if it's 65, I'd have to roll 13 for something that's extremely hard. When that kind of thing comes up, I usually just try a different action, al alternative unless I have no other choice. But it is pretty intense when you know you've got a, only a 13% chance and you drop those dice and it lands with the um, tense place as a one. And you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh god. You know, it is so intense. Um, there's a major difference with this game and some of the others I've looked at. Like Dungeons and Dragons, Cyberpunk Red. Um, D&D combat is generally a focal point. Even if you make a campaign where it isn't, the rules make it a focal point. Like if you're going to have combat, there's your day, right? Um... I would say Cyberpunk Red, it isn't as severe. And one of the reasons it isn't as severe is your characters die pretty quick in Cyberpunk Red. Here, the focus is not combat. If anything, it is highly preferable if you avoid it. It's about ex it's about um investigation. You're looking for clues to figure out what's going on. There's a map of Arkham which is a fictional city in Massachusetts that uh, H.P. Lovecraft stories take place in or around. Um, this is much more investigative, and combat is super, super deadly. Like, Call of Cthulhu does have a reputation for killing off characters. That reputation is pretty well earned. Right? Now, there are other forms of Call of Cthulhu that are less deadly, like Pulp Cthulhu, which I'll probably review eventually. Um, and I like the idea of taking some elements of Pulp Cthulhu and just putting them in here, but not all of the elements. Keep it deadly, but maybe have like one way, that, like maybe the um, luck score, spending luck to survive kind of thing maybe. But in this, you've got a, a, a bestiary. So we've got monsters and stuff, which I feel like you have to have if the book is an all-in-one solution, this, say like, the player's handbook, 5e player's handbook, is not an all-in-one solution. And it doesn't say it is. It's enough for a player. It's something the DM should have, but, you know, they should know. But that's it. This isn't a all-in-one solution either, or at least it doesn't try to be, but it is. It goes so above and beyond what it says it is that you can't really, like, fault it. I've got a bestiary in here, I have character creation rules, I have information on how to run the game and what adventures are like, I have background information on locations and places and things and people, um, there's so much going on in this book, so much, right? The art, look at this, the art is fantastic, also kind of gross, but you know, and remember I mentioned I wanted some adventures or scenarios right we have amidst the ancient trees right here i'm not going to go into what that adventure is but i will potentially do a review of the adventure i want to make sure i've played it enough times and crimson letters i have another scenario right so that's two scenarios right here not only am i able to play right out of this book i've got two scenarios for a minimum of two but i'll be honest i feel like these are going to be more like two or three sessions a piece kind of adventures. Um, and then we get into the appendices with the glossary and um, converting to seventh edition, which is, I think, literally just those two pages. Let's see. Okay, I want to be completely honest with you. I feel like it doesn't need all this. Converting is actually incredibly simple. And then we've got equipment lists for different eras. 
the 1920s is the standard era. The reason is because that's when Lovecraft was writing his stories, right? Then modern day is probably the second most popular era. Got all, all these weapon tables here. The thing is, there's Call of Cthulhu in ancient Rome. It's called Invictus. There's Call of Cthulhu in um, Victorian London. Actually, yeah, Victorian London. It is a uh, Cthulhu by Gaslight. There's also one in Jane Austen's time called uh, Regency Cthulhu. Um, there's one in the Old West, Down Darker Trails. Um, you could set it anywhere in, in the far future, or outer space, whatever you want to do, right? These really handy flowcharts for how combat works, they're really nice. Um, I have to admit that combat itself, like the basics, are pretty easy. But there are moments when things come up and you're like, okay, I'm not sure what to do. Those charts really, really help. Got an index, book this big needs one because this thing is huge. Not counting the advertisements in the back. We're looking at 445 pages. That's a lot in this beautiful hardcover. So let's take a look. Now first you can see this hanging out the back, right? These are ribbons. This is a major perk. I love it when a hardback book like this has ribbons because these ribbons are bookmarks. Now I have one very minor complaint when I read it one of my ribbons, I don't know how well you can see that, frayed, yep. The other one is still fine. So it was odd, but if you have a ribbon, there's almost a guarantee, let's take a look and see, almost a guarantee that you're gonna have stitched binding. Look at that eye right there, look at that. That is how you do it. That is how you build a book, right there. So with the exception of maybe the move and spine thing, which I'm not sure if that's even a big deal, like the thing lays over look at that. um that's near the back that's near the front that's what the eyes for it lays over and does an amazing job okay so the only thing i could possibly complain about here is this frayed ribbon and that could have been me i mean i could have had a hangnail or something in it hooked it it wouldn't be the first time something like that's happened, but usually it would hook like the inside of my pants or whatever, like when I was hands or in my pockets to get like my keys or whatever. But this, this core book is really an all-in-one solution, even though it doesn't advertise itself as such. You could do everything you ever wanted to do right here, especially because there's a ton of adventures for Call of Cthulhu online for free, actually made by Chaosium or used in conventions by Chaosium. There's so much going on there. There's so many opportunities. So, I have to give this thing a score, right? So, I would say the Call of Cthulhu Keeper Rulebook on a score of 0 to 10, this is a perfect 10. I do not think the ribbon situation, that one ribbon, that I'm not even sure is their fault, is enough to knock it even a half a point down. This is how you do an RPG book. This is the exemplar. This is the what it should look like, especially when you look at the pricing. $55.95. For I mean, like the D D books were $50. Or, I mean you can get them discounted, you get all this stuff discounted if you know where to look. But for $55, not only did it win at the Origins Award Hall of Fame, but it is built so well. And the rules are very easy to understand. I just realized there's this tiny little boat here. That is going to probably be a mild problem. I'm just saying. Um, but this is a scene you could have seen right out of the short story Call of Cthulhu. Um, do you have to have read H.P. Lovecraft stories to enjoy this? No. Uh, it doesn't hurt. It, I mean, in a way, it might help. I would probably read specific ones. Um... Although some of the ones I'm gonna I would mention do have some of the racist stuff in there. It is a kind of It's a deep Metaphor within it that if you don't think about it in that way It really won't occur to you too much But once you know and you go back and look at it, you're like holy crap, right? So I would recommend the shadow over Innsmouth, which that's a great example of one that it definitely has a racist connotation But if you just enjoy it for what happens to our protagonist, you'll love it Call Cthulhu, I think you should, at the Mountains of Madness. 
and some shorter ones. The Outsider, I absolutely love The Outsider. It's so good. And um, Pikmin's Model. I think those get across. But you know what? Let's add one more. Whoop. The Picture in the House. You read those, that's a total of maybe 50 pages between all those stories. Some of those stories are three or four pages long. At the Mountains of Madness is kind of long, but the others are kind of sh like really short. Um, you don't understand the tone that this is going for, right? Um, but your players, their characters will die. Their characters will go insane. Possibly so insane they become a villain and you, as the GM you can, or keeper, you control them and they make new characters. Don't get attached to the characters. Get attached to the stories being told and maybe the organization the characters have created to investigate these horrible things, right? Very similar to Delta Green, except I'd say Delta Green is more deadly because this does have a lot of options to tweak that where Delta Green is very much pushing the spiral of destruction. Call of Cthulhu, it will happen, but I think it's a more slow motion and you there are ways to like balance it out so that it isn't as big of a threat, but you're going to have characters die. It, it is the way it is. TPK should be rare, but, you know, that's just in general. Unless you're playing something like Paranoia, but that's for another day. So, again, Call of Cthulhu. 10 out of 10. It is an amazing book. I hope you enjoyed this review. If so, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'm trying to, like, imitate a bell. I don't know how to do that. Um, to get notified when I upload videos, I am... Since I've redone this channel as an RPG channel, I'm sorry, a tabletop RPG channel, um, I've been uploading one video a week on Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, I don't know if it adjusts it to 1 p. like, if it's 1 p.m. all the time, everywhere, or if it's just 1 p.m. Eastern and whatever else, everybody's doing whatever time it is there, that's when it uploads. But that's why I picked the time. Actually, my 13-year-old helped me pick the time. Um, please you know, do that. Um, I don't have a Patreon or anything like that. I might consider doing that if I could ever figure out what it is, but, um, but everybody else says it, you know, but seriously, if you have never played a horror RPG before, play it. If, I mean, like after I played it, I realized what I was missing. It was right up my alley. It's what I need to be doing, right? So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time on Outdated Reviews.